There are many Azure data centers around the world, connected by over 165,000 miles of fiber and subsea cable that make up the Azure global infrastructure. Now, the big question you need to answer is where are you going to deploy your workloads? My name is Eric Boyd. I'm an Azure MVP, a Microsoft Regional Director, and the founder of ResponsiveX, where we help customers run workloads and develop applications in Azure. The Azure global infrastructure footprint is enormous, and it can be intimidating to figure out where to deploy your workloads without an understanding of the terminology used to identify and segment the Azure infrastructure. In this video, I'm going to explain what the terminology, like geographies, regions, data centers, and availability zones mean. I will show you how you can visualize the Azure global infrastructure and find regions for your workloads. And I'll highlight the aspects you need to consider when selecting the regions for your workloads. Azure consists of more than 60 regions in geographies across the globe. An Azure geography is the topmost grouping of Azure infrastructure. It represents a discrete market containing at least one or more regions. An Azure geography preserves data residency and compliance boundaries, allowing customers with data residency and compliance needs to keep their data and applications close. Geographies are fault tolerant and can withstand regional failures and outages. Examples of geographies include the United States, Canada, Mexico, India, China, and more. Within an Azure geography, there are one or more Azure regions. An Azure region is a set of data centers connected by dedicated low latency networking to provide predictable latency between them. Azure gives customers the flexibility to deploy workloads where they are needed by providing more global regions than any other cloud provider. Examples of regions in the United States geography include East US, East US 2, Central US, West US, West US 2, and several more. When you deploy resources in Azure, you deploy to the region you choose. Choosing a region or several regions for your solution is an important part of architecting your solution. You can explore the Azure Global Infrastructure by using the Azure Global Infrastructure page on azure.com. Towards the top, you'll see a button labeled Explore the Globe. I'm going to click it and we will see an interactive globe with the 60 plus Azure regions and the supporting global Azure infrastructure. This is a great visual for getting a sense of Azure infrastructure around the world. I will click the filter icon in the upper left-hand corner, expand the legend section, and select the infrastructure I want to see. I'm going to uncheck view all and check regions. This will display only the regions on the globe. I'm now going to expand the region filters and select the criteria I'd like to use to filter the regions. I'll expand availability zones presence and select available. A list of regions are displayed matching my filter criteria. Within a region that has availability zones, there are several data centers that are isolated and independent, meaning they don't share things like power, cooling, networking, and physical space. That means if there is a disaster in a specific data center, but it was isolated to that data center, you have other data centers within that region that can take over and run the workloads. This gives you the ability to have single digit millisecond failover within a region, which is a really nice high availability solution. When you are selecting the regions for your workloads, you wanna consider a few things. First, where are your users for this specific workload? You'd like to provide the best experience for your users, and one way to help with that is to optimize performance by reducing network latency. And to do that, you would need to select a region that is close in proximity and network latency to your users. Second, you'll want to consider any compliance or data residency regulations that you must adhere to. For example, if you are required to keep your data within Germany and never to leave Germany, then you would need to select a region within the Germany geography. You can find more information about Azure's compliance offerings in the Azure Compliance Hub on docs.microsoft.com. Lastly, you'll want to select a region that has all the services you'll need for your solution. If we go back to azure.com's global infrastructure page and click on products by region, this will take you to a page that lets you configure a matrix of service availability by regions. I'm going to select the regions that I'm considering for my workload. I've selected Canada and the US, and then I can select the products that I need for my solution. 
I'm going to cheat and click on select all products. This will populate a matrix of regions and the service availability. This will help me decide which regions can support my workloads and which regions I should deploy my workloads into. If your workload has users distributed across the globe, or your workload is extremely sensitive to outages and downtime beyond what the single region SLAs provide, you might also consider deploying your workloads into multiple regions around the globe. In the next video of this series, I'll show you how you can estimate the costs of running your solutions. Before I wrap up, I'd like to invite you to join me at our weekly Azure Live Q&A session. During the 30-minute session, I will host an interactive and live Q&A to answer your Azure questions. <laughs>